Hey, it's your old pal Lucid Stu again, and this is Stu's News, a review of American high-speed rail happenings of the last month. In this December 2023 episode, we'll see what went down in November. Starting off with Brightline West and an explanation of the new intro, Siemens unveiled the American Pioneer 220 concept, which would be an American-made version of their Velaro Novo design. Looking at the company facts sheet, it's clear this idea is aimed at Brightline West. Let's hear it for the party car. However, I don't think it's coincidence that 220 is California High Speed Rail's intended cruising speed, so might we see a modified version of this in competition for California High Speed Rail train set procurement? We've been following Brightline West Surface Transportation Board actions lately. The Surface Transportation Board has cleared the project. That was the last federal regulatory hurdle before construction. No word yet from Brightline about when they will break ground. They are likely waiting for the federal state partnership for intercity passenger rail grants. We have been two, but they're still yet to drop. Should happen soon. Let's move on to California High Speed Rail. The California High Speed Rail Authority put out an RFQ for track and overhead contact systems design services. This is a six and a half year contract to design the track and overhead systems for the initial 171 mile segment between Merced and Bakersfield. Work will be phased roughly in line with the phasing of construction. This is a boo-boo from the last video, but it's important news, so I wanted to report on it in the regular segment. I can't figure out who pointed that out. If it was you, let me know when and where you told me, and I'll pin you in the comments. Regardless, that's a gold star. Hollywood Burbank Airport and California High Speed Rail have reached an agreement to end litigation concerning the proposed high speed rail station at the airport. The station became an issue because the California High Speed Rail Authority wants to tunnel under the airport and have the station underground there. The two entities have agreed to work together on the concept. Now let's take a look at the reports from the authorities, board meeting, and finance and audit committee. Capital outlay budget summary, things are in line with projections from last month. A little behind expenditure pace at $123 million for the month of September. A not great, but not terrible amount. Keep in mind, these FNA reports are two months behind. The preliminary data for October is favorable in comparison at nearly 200 million expended. The design build expenditures chart. Are we on the rise or is August a blip in an otherwise flat trend? The coming months will tell. Risk contingency drawing down steadily. Still looking at being over budget by the end of 2024 if this trend continues. Information from November's board meeting indicates an additional 280 million in change orders should hit that report next month. This is reflected in the projected change of 324 million in CP1's risk contingency by the end of 2023. The construction labor force remains elevated at a healthy 1,348 workers. In regards to construction progress, nothing new in process in September, but one mile of guideway was completed. A huge jump in utility relocations, still 676 out of 1,836 to go, but now they have some breathing room. CP4 earned value chart. Nothing new to see here, however, we know from the December board meeting material that CP4 is still not done. Will it be finished by the end of the year? We'll see. A new chart on the list earned value for CP1. Of course, currently on schedule because aren't they always? Actual earned value at 67% should be at 80% by this time next year, done by the end of 2026. Now we can track it over time and see if they can finally stick to a schedule. Lastly, at the board meeting this month, they'll be voting on a rail systems engineering service contract with network rail consultants for five years. Looks like Britain's finest engineers will be crossing the pond to help out on the left coast for a while. With that, we say goodbye to California High Speed Rail and hello to Acela and the NEC. November saw the announcement of the Federal State Partnership for Intercity Passenger Rail Program grants 
for the Northeast Corridor. Those totaled $9 billion. I made a whole video about it. Check out the info above in the card for a detailed rundown of those projects if you haven't already. I'll also put a link in the description. A whole bunch of dignitaries, including Secretary of Transportation Pete Buttigieg, met in New York City to celebrate the start of construction on the $17 billion Hudson Tunnel project, adding two more tracks between Manhattan and New Jersey. This was facilitated by the final phase of the Hudson Yards concrete casing, which will connect the new tunnel with New York Penn Station. Now let's look at the Amtrak numbers for the month. Revenue has recovered after an August dip. However, operating profit has not, with NEC Regional actually losing money for the month. That is the first time that has happened in at least 13 months. Despite the rebound in revenue, overall operating profit remained weak. I finally have some year-over-year -year monthly data to compare. September Acela revenue is up 20%, and overall NEC up 10% when compared to the same period last year. Also with the end of their fiscal year, Amtrak announced that NEC ridership was up 30% over fiscal year 2022. This is only 3% short of 2019 pre-pandemic ridership, so the train riders are back, at least on the NEC. Now let's see what's happening in Texas, starting with Texas Central. The political wrangling continues with the Brazos Valley Council of Governments officially reiterating their opposition to the project, which will run through their backyard while offering a rather weird station option located at a highway junction 20 miles from any town of significance. Moving on to Dallas-Fort Worth high-speed transportation in what may be the greatest statement in politics this year, the North Central Texas Council of Governments Transportation Director told the good folk of Arlington, Texas, quote, you don't get high speed rail for free, end quote, in relation to the planned station there. Also mentioned in this article is the 2026 FIFA World Cup because Dallas is one of the host cities. I'd get used to hearing that in relation to transit funding over the next couple years. Although in this case, the venue is AT&T Stadium in Arlington. So Arlington looks to be holding the cards on that issue. Surprisingly, we're coming back to Northeast Maglev already. A legal dispute over the site of the proposed Baltimore Terminus has been resolved, with Northeast Maglev now planning to remain underground into the site. This resolution could get the environmental review process restarted. We'll see. Now let's take a look at things happening in Congress. H.R. 3893, titled the Freights First Act, is still sitting in the House Subcommittee on Railroads, Pipelines, and Hazardous Materials. The exact text is short and sweet, quote, inner city and commuter rail passenger transportation provided by or for Amtrak shall not have preference over freight transportation in using a rail line, junction, or crossing if such rail line junction or crossing is located within 50 miles of a port or rail yard, except in an emergency. This is somewhat old news. I just found it. This bill has been in committee for nearly six months, so maybe it will simply go away. This subcommittee had an unrelated hearing on November 29th that was pretty negative on California high speed rail, positive on Brightline West and fairly positive just about everywhere else, including between Houston and Dallas. Nothing new on H.R. 1435, the Preserving Choice in Vehicle Purchases Act that would keep states from imposing bans on combustion vehicle sales. That is currently in the Senate Committee on Environmental and Public Works. Lastly, H.R. 4820, the Transportation and HUD Appropriations Bill that threatens to gut Amtrak and intercity passenger rail funding. Proceedings on that have been postponed. No word yet on when that will be taken up again. Finally, opinion pieces concerning high-speed rail in the U.S. seem to be popping up everywhere. Some are supportive, some contradictory, and some aren't all that serious. But hey, at least people are actually thinking and talking about the topic. Now it's time for Stu's Boo-Boos, where we look at everything I missed last month. 
As mentioned, I missed the California High Speed Rail RFQ for tracking overhead systems, but that's it. That brings the gold star total to nine. Silver stars for me, one. I'm getting murdered here. As always, make a comment pointing out a boo-boo in this presentation and you win a prize. Plenty more Federal Railroad Administration High Speed Rail Corridor videos to come, more city pairs available to investigate, and of course, another Stu's News next time back in your favorite time slot on the last Friday of December 2023. Also, Federal State Partnership for Inner City Passenger Rail Grants for the rest of the country, minus the NEC, should be showing up this month. So there will likely be a dedicated video for that as well. But that's all for now. Until next time, I'll see you on that big, beautiful freeway.